Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. As the reality of coronavirus, COVID-19 sets in, lots of changes are starting to happen. You know, starting to happen, we see more children staying at home, more parents burdened with the responsibility of being teachers and parents at the same time while struggling their business. And in this conversation, we've always asked, is there any such thing as balance? How are you able to adapt as a parent? But today we'll be focusing on mothers. And joining us to have this conversation today is a mother herself based in the UK, running her family, running her business here in Nigeria amidst all the madness that is coronavirus. I'm talking about the founder of Desire 1709 Fashion, Toyo C. Gregory Jonah, joining us all the way from the UK. Good morning and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Good morning, Oli. Good morning. So Adewa and I are going to be having a conversation with you about, you know, coronavirus and adjusting to motherhood. But let's start with, first of all, let's look at the reality. How has it hit you personally? Well, it's been, it's been so much. Like the fact that, you know, everything that the school was doing had to literally fall on us, the parents. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't prepared. We were not prepared for that at all. And there's nothing you're going to do. This didn't leave us with any option. It wasn't a case of whether, oh, I can choose to do this or I can choose to do that. It's, you're, you're just going to, you know, you just have to take on the responsibility. And it means so much because um, aside from taking on that work, you also have your own personal life that you didn't plan for this kind of disruption. So it's just been, you know, every day trying to say, you know what, whatever it is that we can get done, we just get it done so that, you know, we don't beat ourselves too much about the fact that we're unable to do as much as we would normally do without this extra responsibility placed upon us, you know? So, but it's, it's been, it's been a lot, but we're coping, we're coping. It's been, it's been about seven or eight weeks now. And I would say that we're not doing badly at all. We've kind of adjusted and, you know, we just hope that this ends really, really soon. Seven or eight weeks, that's a lot of time being with the kids. A lot of um, mothers who haven't really had that kind of uh, responsibility saddled upon them, seeing the fact that, okay, in the mornings you drop your children at school, you, they come back at night, you know, in the evening, so you have time to yourself. Being in this situation now that you're here, what would you say are the best ways to go around this for m mothers who are in this case right now? Is there a, a way you, is there a plan? A daily plan you can write up and say, okay, today we do this, this time we do that, that we do that. Is there something that, a guideline that you can suggest to mothers in situations like this? Okay, thank you so much. Um, first of all, routine is life, routine is key. Mm. Irrespective of the fact that, you know, this thing came to us unplanned and um, a lot of us didn't plan for this. Yeah. Like you said, parents who, you know, never planned for this, who were working and all of that. I feel like, um, for me, I've always um, thrived on plans and, you know, time blocks and all of that. So when this happened, what I did was I went back to my plan and I said, this right now is no longer realistic because of the fact that life has, you know, brought its own thing. Mm -hmm. So I went back to my plan. I started adjusting things. I said, this is not realistic. This is what we have to do now. Because the truth is, you have the children in the house. Yeah. You had no plans for them. If you don't sit down and say, this is what is going to happen, there will constantly be chaos. Yes. And there's no way anybody is going to thrive, whether with doing work from home or with running your business from home or with even preparing for whenever this is going to end and even enjoying being at home with your children. You have to plan it. If you're not planning anything, you're not going, everybody's just going to be winging things and nothing comes from the place of winging. Mm. So I literally sat back and my normal routine, I started to walk backwards and say, all of this is no longer going to work. I put the ones that won't work aside. And then what can I realistically do mm -hmm. in this period to ensure that there's sanity in my home and we're also, you know, able to incorporate the fact that we now become the teachers, you know, we become literally everything. So you have to plan entertainment for the children because as they get frustrated, they pass it on to you. They, yes. they don't listen because they just want to be out of the house. So it's, you know, it's one thing that has helped me to stay sane in this period is writing out at this time, what can we do? And I'm saying that you have to do this realistically because you need to know that there are a lot of limitations at the moment. You can't really do 
you know, things that you would do. So no grand plans, just realistic, practical things that you can do within your house, you know, within the confines of your house in safety and, you know, just um, in a way that everyone is happy at the end of the day because you don't want your children to be, you know, to be frustrated. They pass it on to you. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the day, you're asking yourself, what exactly did we do with today? So yeah. yes, definitely routine works, writing down what we can do and putting it into time slot. Okay, realistically, we can spend one hour doing this. For example, schoolwork. Yes. You can't do schoolwork for too long because first of all, your house is not a school. It's not yes. a school environment. Mm -hmm. So the way that the kids are stimulated in school normally to learn is not the same thing that happens in your house. In the house. So all of those things you have to put into consideration. Mm. Right, okay, so, so that, has, that, that really helps. Let's also talk about the role of fathers in all of this, because a lot of the time the focus is on the moms being saddled with the responsibilities. How important, you know, is it that fathers are very involved as well? Because, you know, with, with the way things have been set up in our society for years, for the longest time, it's always been mom, moms, moms. But our generation is starting to see a change in the way par parenting is being done. It's done. So, yeah, how important is it for fathers to be a part of this? Like, fathers need to hear just mm -hmm. how important it is for them to be a part of this. Okay, thank you so much, Olive. And this is so important. And it is even more important now because the kids are with every one of us in the house. My husband is very hands-on. And, you know, now that the school, the responsibility of, you know, training the children now falls on both of us, it becomes more... What's the word now? In fact, we look at it as a way to even bond. Fathers need to get involved because there's so much that the woman can do. Now, the schoolwork has fallen on us. A lot of other things. You know you know that period when the kids go to school, your husband has gone to work. If you're working from home, you can get your job done. Or if you're at your own job, you can get your own, your own job done. Allows the woman to actually, you know, allows you to flourish. And then when everybody comes back, you know, we all come back kind of refreshed, you know, there's a different kind of vibe in the house and all of yeah. that. Now, imagine that the mother is now faced with everything, caring for everybody, ensuring that, you know, um, schoolwork is done because now a lot of schools are doing homeschooling online. You sit down with the children on Zoom to ensure that, you know, you kind of like simulate the learning environment. Mm -hmm. The fathers need to come in. Imagine if, you know, the dad is the one sitting there with the children. So it's almost like a, you, you do this today, I do that tomorrow. They even give the children the opportunity to bond with their father, it gives them the opportunity to see some see, see beyond their mom being the one doing everything. Right? There's that, there's that um what's the word now? There's that um is it confidence or is there is that yes. um, involved in um I don't know I don't know what I mean what was it, it, it is, it is right a, they, they're building the confidence of the children as well, seeing that exactly. they have good parents so they involved see, in, their, in their parents. You understand they see that you know that is there Oh my God, we're doing school today with daddy. Mm -hmm. It just it just makes everything different. And it even allows the woman some time to actually breathe because there's already so much. Having the children at home 24 7, only trust me, it is a lot more demanding than any mom right now bargained for. So the dad should get in on it. it. It makes it even makes your relationship with your children a whole lot better. You start to see things that your wife is constantly seeing. You start to see things that your wife is the only one who is privileged to see because mm -hmm. she is more involved. So, you know, we're advocating for more hands on that. It, it makes a lot of difference in even the parenting the children. Hmm. Now, uh, we, we were, we're talking about uh, the educational aspect of this whole situation, seeing that our parents are not teachers. They are not actual teachers. You can't say every parent would be able to teach your child, you know, through the educational curriculum and this and that and that. Now. In sure. a case like this, uh, that, uh, that, that your children are with you at home and you're not used to doing this as a parent, are there ways that you can advise a parent to, you know, probably they should uh, start taking online courses because of their children? Or is there something that, you know, that the parents can do to also help, you know, ease that part of, of uh, the parenting at this moment, seeing that your children still have to be educated and they're at home doing this? Oh, I can't hear you guys. Oh, can you hear now? Can you hear us now? I lost some part. I lost some part of his question. Okay, the okay. End part. Can I, I? I can take it again. I said, seeing that um, the parents are saddled with the responsibility of teaching the children. I'm talking about educational wise now. Are there ways for a parent who hasn't done that before, who doesn't do that? 
are there some are you going to advise the parents to probably take courses online on how to you know sit with your child or study with them together what are the advices you give to parents in this kind of situation I still oh. lost the oh. end part. I still lost the end part, but okay. I can, I can, I, maybe I'm guessing that what are the ways that, you know, parents can prepare themselves or equip themselves? Is that yes. what you're asking? Yes. Yes. yes, yes, that's what I'm asking. Okay, okay, great. So, um, before COVID happened, um, I live in the UK and, um, you know, life is different in Nigeria where you have, like, teachers come in, private um, tutors come in and mm -hmm. take the children after school. Mm -hmm. I had that privilege when I was in Nigeria, but I don't have it right now, so... Um, one of the things that I've, that I that I started to do to help me fit into the role of that private tutor and now the almost the full time teacher yeah. for my children is that you know I started to learn how to you know some of the things I I to, of course there are a lot of free courses online that can help you understand the developmental stages that your children are actually at mm. in their educational life because the truth is. The development that we see at home is different from what the teachers see at school yes. based on their own training. Mm. So, you know, I took a few um, free courses online just to help me understand so that you, on, if your child is not picking certain things, you are not fussy because as parents, because we're not naturally trained to be like educational teachers, mm -hmm. there are ways that the school teachers handle the children who are slow learners, who are yeah. fast learners, and, you know, they give each child the opportunity to learn at their own pace so yes. that nobody feels left out or feels um, um, pressured to mm -hmm. learn at the same pace as their classmates. So I took, you know, some online courses to help mm -hmm. me. And every single day, I am looking out for materials to read, to get better, because I don't know how long this is going to be. I mean, in the UK, we don't have, there's no, point. it's not like in Nigeria where everyone has been asked to, you know, they've, they've kind of like relaxed the lockdown. Mm -hmm. We don't know how long it's going to take. So I've been taking courses, you know, online um, resources and materials that helps me to understand the children better. At this age, this is what you should expect. Mm -hmm. Don't expect that because somebody else's child is reading or studying at this level, your own child is studying at this same. level. Those yes. are the things that parents need to pay attention to. Also, we need to get intentional about, you know, how our relationship with our children in terms of their education, even if we have private tutors, we need to pay extra attention because the truth is, the effect that our personal relationship with our children have on their learning, um, on their learning life, it cannot be overemphasized. Mm. It cannot be overemphasized. Fine, we, we pay the teachers, we pay the school, but there, there, there's that space of where our own love comes in into encouraging them with their yeah. learning. Yeah. You know, the fact that, oh, you didn't do it well, but mommy is saying, well done for even for effort. It yeah. goes a long way. Mm. So, you know, online courses, um, resources online, then even spending time, like dedicating time to say, you know, I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes away from my phone, away from everything, and do this schoolwork with my child. That's like so important. Even when they go back to school, I feel like it's something that we need to put into practice as much as life and time permits parents. Because I understand that a lot of parents, you know, have other responsibilities that won't allow them. Yes. So this is not to, you know, make anybody feel guilty, but just know that this is important for these children to actually, you know, grow in the right way. Speaking of, you know, making anybody feel guilty, we know there is such a thing as mommy guilt, where you start to feel like you're not a good mom mm -hmm. because you haven't done this and that. And there's a tendency for people now, social media has even made it more difficult because there's a tendency mm -hmm. for mothers to compare themselves with other moms. You look at this mom on Instagram and she looks like she has it all together. together. She's taking care of her family, her children are thriving, her edges are looking full, you know, her body is, she's working out and she's looking fit. And you're just wondering, how is this woman doing everything? <laughs> and it just looks like my own life is scattered. So how do you deal with mommy guilt, where you feel like you're not good enough for your mom? And how do you deal with comparing yourself with other moms? You know, these advices, uh, I'd like you to give this advice because I know that there are many moms who are in that position right now. Okay, thank you so much, Oli. And um, I just want to mention that, you know, for any mom who is watching right now, um, so... First of all, you need to come to the place where you understand that these people that you're comparing yourself with or whatever they think means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Because the truth is your children, they don't want a perfect mom. They just want their mom who is real and 
who is living, who is doing things to make their life better every single day. Mm -hmm. I keep saying it, saying this, I'm an advocate of, you know, a woman should be wholesome, complete and balanced. And, but you need to ensure that, you know, that completeness, that wholesomeness is determined by you considering your circumstances, because the truth is everybody's circumstance is different. And what, what, who exactly defines a good mom? Who mm. really, who? Because what is good to you is relative to somebody else's life. Yes. And then some people have some certain undue advantage. So if I don't have this advantage, if I don't have this privilege, why am I going to be comparing myself with you? That's mm. you being unfair to yourself. Right? Understand yeah. where you are in your motherhood journey. Understand where you are in your parenting. And every single day, try to be better than who you were yesterday. Be intentional about getting better than who you were yesterday, not the next mom. Because the truth is, with social media, Olive, like you said, it's made it so difficult that everybody wants to be like that person they're seeing, forgetting that that person is showing you what they want you to see. Exactly. Exactly. They're showing you the part of motherhood they wanted to see. When they cried in the toilet, when they're running around in the house, when they're hiding in one room for their children, they're not sharing that with you. Mm. When they feel like a failure, when their son is rebelling, when their son is not listening, they're not coming to tell you that. So they're showing you the part they want you to see. So it's almost, it's almost curated. So you have to be careful what you're comparing your own life, life with. And I'm really glad that, that you have mentioned rebelling as well and mm. rebellion because you're also a very big advocate of parents being intentional with their relationships, you know, with the relationship they have with their children. There was a video you did with your son that went viral and you just showed the kind of relationship that you have with him. So we know that there are many children that are not used to being enclosed for this long. So it's affecting their mental health as well. We're going to see a lot of children rebelling against their parents. Uh, you know, as a final question from my end, what are some of the words of advice you'd give to parents in dealing with their children, you know, in enforcing discipline when trying to say that, because lots of parents are losing it. We're seeing lots of abuse going on between spouses and parents transferring aggression to their children. So what advice would you give to parents in terms of um, enforcing discipline on their children? Olive, thank you so much. And this is so valid because um, when you confine people, different kinds of bees, like when you put somebody in a very hot place, different kinds of things come out. Right. Um, with children, I would say, first of all, these children don't care until they know that you care. And how do you show care? It's by attention. A lot of times, the things that they are rebelling about, they are, they've been speaking to you about it. They've been showing you cues about it. They've been doing things that you're not paying attention to. Mm. Right. And Parents need to step away from being reactive because a lot of parents are actually reactive. And that's where rebellion gets out of hand because now you are trying to force something. I'm going to, I don't know if I'm permitted to use the word, the Yoruba word that says that, you know, the days of a minimal beer has gone where people are saying, I'm your mother, you have to do this, you have to do that. These children have personality. They, they are individuals. My five-year-old will ask you, mommy, why are you shouting at me? And then I would just go into my shell, my shameful shell of, oh, Asha, I'm sorry about that. Because the truth is, they deserve the explanation. Whatever it is you're trying to communicate by shouting or by fighting or by being forceful, they're not hearing. They've lost, you've lost that opportunity to share that message with them because you're shouting. So first of all, you need to understand the child to know for my child to be rebelling about this thing, there is a message that he is trying to pass across. There's something I am not seeing. There's something I'm not seeing. Whenever my son is, you know, a bit, you know, kind of about a certain thing, only if I step back and I start to look, what is this boy trying to say? What is it that he has been doing that I didn't pay attention to? And until you fix that, that rebellion will continue to get out of hand because you, what you should be paying attention to, you are not. Rebellion is not something that starts overnight, Oli. It doesn't start overnight. And a lot of it comes from lack of attention when they feel like you don't care. So it's almost their own way of hurting you back. It's their way of getting back at you because they don't understand beyond that, really. But when they see that they do something wrong, you discuss it. I have conversations about 
you know, about bad behavior. And then we understand consequences. We're at the place where when, you know, mommy is trying to, you know, set consequences based on something that they've done wrong, they're not even questioning it because they understand that this is what you did and it brought about this. And let me tell you, it has made my life somewhat easy because now the older one is telling the younger one, oh, don't do this because mommy said this and this and this is going to happen. So it's almost like everyone in my house is now a parent. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yes. And it reduces the pressure on even me. So, but still, they are still children. You're still going to see certain things mm -hmm. that they are doing. So you now have to look at it. Why is this happening? And honestly, sometimes it will make no sense and it will just be outright wanting to be a child, right? And yes. then it now depends on how you as a parent understand your child enough to be able to rein in that behavior without making them feel like, you know, without pushing them into, you know, that life of performance. Oh, I have to do this to do this. You know, as little as telling children not to do something without explaining or if that thing induces rebellion yes. because they're saying, Mommy is saying, don't do this. But she why? didn't explain why. Why? Yeah. She didn't explain why. And we have to explain. They deserve explanation. Don't say, oh, I'm your mother. You have to listen to me. No. African mothers are laughing at you right now with bankere <laughs> and slap. And exactly. <laughs> but you see, that bankere and slap is the reason why a lot of people have lost their t children. They've yeah. lost their teenagers. Yeah. And it's they why a lot of, a lot of people... With you have grown yeah. up without um, what's healthy self-esteem because they've always been trampled upon and all. And I'm really excited that you devote your time to recording content on social media, on YouTube, you know, helping mothers, you know, to be able to find that balance and to be better moms. So thank you for what you do. And thank I you wish so you a you. belated happy birthday. I know it was your birthday. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed thank your birthday. You. I did, I did, I did, I did the little that I could do. They, they, they made me, the men in my life made me cake. So you know, it was good. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so it, 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 it was a lockdown birthday, I see. You know, lockdown. yes, it was a lockdown <laughs> birthday, but it was, it was absolutely. Beautiful. Maybe you should actually let us know before we go. What is the reality of coronavirus in the UK? Okay, so um, Olive, honestly, I haven't been out of my house. Like I haven't gone beyond the front of my house in almost seven weeks. Wow. And that's because, you know, it's real. It's every day you watch the news is frightening because of how, you know, the numbers are going up and mm. in terms of death, in terms of you know, new cases. And I'm like, I would rather remain in my house and, you know, be safe in my house than just, you know, exposing myself to the risk of, because you don't even know, you can't, Nobody's going to write it on their face that they Nobody. have it. Nobody. You mm -hmm. know, it's, 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 it's every single day. I don't, I, right now, I don't, want, I don't want to sound, you know, sound negative, but I don't see any hope in sight. I, like, mm. it doesn't look like tomorrow they will tell us to, you know, okay, maybe you can do this. Because it's that, because with the news that we're hearing every day, people are even panicking. That why is it, these numbers are increasing? What's going on? What's mm -hmm. going on? I haven't been out of this house and I have no plans to actually step out because you don't know who you're going to see at the supermarket or, you know, walk past that has it already. So it's, 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 it's not looking good. We just hope that, you know, this ends really soon. And uh, mm. uh, that's, that's all not, we can say. It's truly side. frightening. Yeah, yes, but we it hope is. for the best. That's really what we can do. Hope for the best. Honestly. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thank and you. Sharing with us on how best mothers can adapt to the COVID-19 reality. We've been speaking with Toyasi Gregory Jonah. She's an entrepreneur, founder of Desire 1709 Fashion, and she's a mom, a blogger mom, vlogger mom as well. She has videos on YouTube in